Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, welcoming country music legend Lee Greenwood to Behind the Velvet Rope. We're talking all about his work with DAV on Veterans Day, so get ready for a great time Behind the Velvet Rope. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. Saving the best for last today, Lee Greenwood. <laughs> all right, man. So we're coming off a crazy night, aren't we? And I want to talk to you all about that. So let's also talk about the work you're doing for veterans. It's really phenomenal, everything you're doing with DAV. I'm going to start there. Okay. Talk to me about the work you're doing with DAV. Okay, well, as an ambassador for DAV, I get the opportunity, the privilege to serve veterans. And in all generations, DAV has served more than a million a year in order to achieve their benefits that they so well deserve because they've served and sacrificed for us. Now it's our turn to be an advocate to get actually what they deserve in health care, uh, payments for their homes or whatever. And we serve to get partnerships to serve with us as well. Being a public figure, being a musician, how important is it to be able to involve yourself in organizations like this? Well, when you throw your celebrity into the mix, it really helps that you know you're doing the right thing. And that's always what I was taught as a kid. Just do the right thing. Serving the DAV is going to be a privilege for us. And we have this new initiative between holidays up until November 29th called Keeping the Promise. We do that all year long. We keep the promise we have made to our veterans that they will get the help that they deserve. And um, this initiative, you can help us by going to the website, dav.org slash join Lee and make a video of some family member that served in the military, make a donation, actually go and get a corporate sponsor to help us actually help our veterans firsthand. So you get to see firsthand what's going on with the veterans. What type of state are they in? Obviously, we're, we're coming off arguably the most brutal election cycle of all time, and you hear two different vantage points about what's happening with the military, seeing it firsthand, what's really going on? Well, as we have a reduced military, we also have a lot of wounded warriors who come home, and sometimes it's very difficult for them to fit back in society. It would be helpful for, to, for them to know that there's the DAV for them. Disabled American Veterans has millions and millions that really need the help. And so if we're there for them, then they'll know that they have a chance to survive. How difficult is it to acclimate back into society when you're in the military and you've done tour of duties? How difficult is it to just come back to normal life? Well, I really don't know because I've never served in the military, but I know a lot of soldiers that have. And um, with the suicide rate, really uh, 22 a day, I mean, it's really awful. PTSD is a, is a more dangerous wound than even someone that may have lost a limb. And DAV will help in all areas of medical rehabilitation as well. All right. This election. What are your thoughts, man? What are your thoughts about what we just saw? Well, two things. Uh, first of all, I'm, you know, I was amazed that we had the two candidates that we did. And now that it's over, I'm hopeful that the nation can bind itself together. I thought both of the acceptance speech uh, by President-elect Trump was excellent, as well as Mrs. Clinton's speech for concession, uh, which his was last night. And ours was today at the time of this taping. So it's, it's wonderful to see that both of them have the same attitude, and that is to heal the nation and bring us together. Now let's hope we can move forward. And we're hoping that the current new administration will be as much engaged with DAV as any time before. Having made such a patriotic song and a song that is all about unity for this country, if you could do something right now, if you could write another song or do something to unify the country, what would you be? What would be your dream list? Like, what would you want to do? Well, the reason I haven't written another patriotic song is because God Bless USA stands for me the anthem that I wanted to always write to unite the country. And isn't it unique that that's exactly what we're trying to do now with as we move to the transition of power from one president to the next, that we're still talking about unification. Why do you think we're so divided as a country? What do you, I've been asking so many people this from whether it's actors, musicians, what do you think it is right now that separates us? Well, Arthur, that's nothing new. I mean, let's talk about the Civil War. I mean, we, <laughs> were, no more, we were no more divided then than we are now. And so it will always be that way. Be, and what's interesting, I think, is the culture evolves. And, of course, God Bless USA is now used as Homeland Security's song along with the national anthem to welcome new immigrants. There are 1,500 uh, immigration ceremonies across the United States that offer new people to come. Did you know that a lot of the people who are not even citizens serve in the military? I did not. And many of them who come back also need the DAV in the services that we provide. 
All right. So with the DAV, what more does the government like? Obviously, we now know who our next president is going to be. What does President elect Trump, and what does the government need to do to help our veterans to increase the help? Well, the new administration needs to partner with DAV. We're a nonprofit outside of government regulation, okay. and so we depend upon public support. So if you can go to the website dav.org slash join Lee, we're going to make sure that your voice will be heard. And if you'll help us help them, it'll be the benefits they deserve. You've had a children's book. You make music. What's next for you, Lee? Our touring schedule will be very heavy. i got two boys, one a senior in high school and one a senior in college. And as they move on to the next phase, my wife and I will probably do a little bit more international touring. Music. Still passion for you? I mean, it's like obviously with the touring, walk me through, how do you continue to have a successful music career? It's got to be so hard in your business. I mean, we see people who have one hit and they're gone. You've had a successful career, man. How does that happen? How are you able to do it? We pursued art. We pursued uh, beautiful music, things with great messages. Uh, we had 17 number one country songs. Some of them I picked as a hit, some I didn't, and they still were hits. <laughs> uh, you just don't know. It's the public opinion that's the lasting thing. We have a new CD called I Want to Be in Your World, and I wrote three of those. And Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins wrote one of the songs. Of well, I sang, and Michael McDonald played piano for me on one of the songs. That that's was pretty, pretty cool. cool. In a studio in Nashville. So, and next year, I'll produce a CD that will contain all of my original songs. It'll be 22 uh, on a personal CD. So when I'm gone, my wife will have that as a cherished CD to sell. When you look at country music from when you first started to now, it is like day and night. The, the explosion of the genre is mind-boggling. What do you think about where it's moving right now? Um, the, the difference is uh, it's, it's still good music. It's still great artists. It's more visual than ever before. And, and so you have to have somebody that's really pretty and handsome, you know, <laughs> and that's part of it. I knew when CMT began to be a, a, an effective factor, it would start taking over the audio. However, the blend of it today is just as good as it's ever been. The difference is, Arthur, that it's a faster paced. You rarely hear a ballad anymore. Uh, Keith Urban's new song, uh, Blue Ain't Your Color, is maybe a, a, maybe a ballad, but it's got a rhythmic feel to it. Right. So it feels the pulse of our society. And I think that's what we need to do with the music is make just we embrace it, feel the, cults of our, the pulse of our culture, and move forward and just keep writing songs that have to do with the fast pace of our communities. Who are some of the young artists you look at and you say, this is someone I'm a fan of. Well, Little Big Town, I've been always a fan They're of. Awesome. And and I knew them when they were kids at Opryland. I used to live down the street from Opryland in Nashville. And they were actually kids that came to my house and I gave a musical clinic to. And then when I toured with them early on, I said, you know, you guys are gonna gonna make it, you just gotta hang in there. And they've been together a long time and they were getting awards the other night at the CMA. How do you know? Like when you're you're touring with them, but how do you know that Little Big Town or anybody else is gonna become what they've become? You use your, your musical uh, experience. I mean, I've been in the business 40, 50 years, and I, I, I recognize good music, I, and, um, and I think I've been a good judge of that. And when a new artist comes along, I don't necessarily judge them by their song or by their vocals, but by their charisma. Um, I think Kenny Rogers may have been one of the uh, greatest uh, charismatic singers ever, but he, did, he wasn't known as male vocalist. Um, so you have to just like figure what do they offer to the public and what makes them famous. And so when I see a new artist coming along that is, it's got all of those components, you don't judge them by one thing. It's the whole thing, the whole package. What do you think about, we have YouTube now, we have social media and it is breaking people, whether you're a supermodel, a country music star, an actor, do you like that people's careers can be made overnight where artists from 30, 40, 50 years ago really had to go through the grind to pay their dues. Like me, you mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I Carrie Underwood, American Idol, and bang, you exactly. know, and it took me 34 years. But that's okay. It's what you do on the other side of that. Because when we had our first hit, it was like, what happens to the second hit? And then the third hit, then a the fourth hit. And I go to the bank, can I buy a bus? You know, and then you say, can I buy another bus? You got to have another hit, you know. So it's, it's dominoes. And then you write a song for somebody that becomes famous. And then you do something of value. And hopefully my involvement now as an ambassador for DAV will be of more value to the community than anything I've done with my music. Does it, does it transition for someone like you where... You say, all right, music career was so important to me, but now the chance to be able to give back, that's the legacy I want to build? I, I think that's maturity. 
and my wife and I talk about that and, and how I can help. And, and I don't know that um, from the very beginning I was ever more involved in the military because I didn't serve in the military. My father did in the Navy after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Uh, USO tours were not extensive until I moved to Nashville, which was almost 24 years later. And then I've done 30 USO tours since then and recognize the plight of the military. You have to be involved and see a soldier come home without an arm. You know, and you go, there's no more greater thing I can do to help him survive. What's been, when you look over so many of these experiences, so many people you've helped, is there one that sticks in your mind, the, the one that is kind of the test case in your mind for, I'm so happy I was able to make a difference in this person's life? You know, I don't know what the time of this taping, but you're going to air this Veterans Day. Yes. Um, so 11-11. 2016, I'll be actually in San Antonio doing a show for a kid named Justin Lane who lost both legs in Afghanistan. We built him a house, and he's a singer, and he has a great band. And so he's going to be my opening act at a show at a, at a venue in San Antonio. And that's the way I'm going to try to help one at a time. But through the DAV, I can help an awful lot more. That's why I've donated my time. You're awesome, man. Congratulations. I think the work you're doing is, you know, awesome. That's all I can say. We need... The, w everything going on with Wounded Warriors, uh, we need to be helping those guys and girls and everybody. It's incredible. Yeah, well, sometimes the wounds are not obvious. And through PTSD, a lot of them uh, really struggle just to survive. And just remember that uh, if people want to partner with us, go to DAV.org slash join Lee. Before I let you go, one question came to my mind. When we see, we're seeing movies right now, American Sniper came to mind as you were mm. talking, where we're beginning to really see the effects of PTSD. Do you, th how, how important is it that movies and art, songs, anything is put out to make people aware of what soldiers have to deal with when they come back? Because less and less military percentage-wise serve this country with 360 million people, we only have like 1% or 2% serving the military. I don't know that's something people need to be driven home with all the time, but it, ne it is a necessary reminder to people who live the American dream that the only reason they have that opportunity is for those who sacrificed. And as a volunteer army, this is not the draft. So those people who signed up for it wrote the check.